Hello everybody, welcome back. So I'm going to show you today a quick video hopefully start to finish on how I make these beautiful paint pour jewellery items. So I've got quite a few of these here. They're my children's versions that I've just brought out. And then in here, I'm nice and organised for once in my life. So we have all of these lovely necklaces and all the little bits that I'll be ready to attach the, the findings onto. Then we have all of these beautiful necklaces. And all of these. So I have been a busy little bunny. So I'll take you through the process of where I get my designs from, the shapes I cut them out, how I stick them down, how I resin dome them, how I attach the fixtures. We'll shift these out of the way. Now I'll move on to my paint peelings. So I collect up everything. I just I think everything's beautiful. <laughs> My other half was saying earlier, I, I really am just obsessed because I think they're all beautiful. You see these little scraps from a previous painting that I did and a half sheets and sheets of these. So I just cut out the shapes I want. These are little scratchy leftovers that I haven't even thrown away and various little tiles that I cut out some craziness on the back of this one some unicorn type ones and these I use a piece of paper inside a laminating sheet and I laminate it and then I use an unused laminating sheet just to hold them and keep the dust out of them more unicorn spills fiery spills I mean they look like nothing fairly ugly there's a couple of nice bits but i just come in and i pick and i choose what i want i've got my oranges together my purples together and then when i'm ready i set myself up some pretty shapes like these and again i use a laminated piece of paper so that I can peel these off and reuse the piece of plastic. I've got all my various shapes there for my kids ones that I'm doing and then I have bigger laminating sheets. Now, I haven't gone out and bought these specifically for the job I just happened to have them and my lovely Nana gave me these big ones and since they don't fit inside my my A4 laminator it's perfect for me to get some use out of them see these these are where the paints actually spilt onto the laminating sheets I figured I would keep them too it creates a really nice stained glass sort of effect when the, I've swiped with these um, on one of my paintings and that's exactly what I've ended up with I just come along and I cut out the shape that I like and I resin it all nicely Okay, and again these are just full of paint paws, shapes, various shapes, more shapes, um, this was a vinyl record, uh, I splattered it down to see what the dip technique would be like, and we have these, look at all these cells, that was a piece that I didn't like and I just wiped the entire lot off the canvas onto the table and made myself sheets and sheets worth of it. So I'll be going at this one for quite a long time. Then we've got some really dark greens, pinks. Oh, anyhow, I could probably sit and show you these forever. They're beautiful. <laughs> I think I could set up my jewellery shop forever more, even if I never painted again. There'd be enough in all of these pieces keep me going for a considerable amount of time so I'll shift them out of the way I'll mix my resin up I'll tell you what's what and we'll crack on 
these are the pieces that I'm working on today. Some of these are on their second layer. These are resin. They're not paint. They haven't been domed. It was resin coasters that I made and these were the runoffs. So I've cut them out and paired them up with similar looking pieces to create necklace and earring sets. Again with these, they have, they're shiny, but they have no resin on them yet. They're made of resin. Excuse me. And then there's others that have had a doming layer on the one side. They're just turned over so that they can have the doming layer on the other side. Well, I think you could probably think of something way better to use, but I like to use what I've got. I stick my things down with this Fimo. What is it? It's size for leaf. So that's what I glue my gold leaf onto things with. It also glues these down onto the plastic absolutely beautifully. So I don't know if you can see actually the other sheet. Um, yes, these ones over here, I glue them down, she says. There, that one's glued down. And it just stops it moving around when I'm giving the piece its first layer. Unfortunately, when you turn the piece over and you're trying to do the resin on the other side, you can't really stick them down as far as I'm aware because that marks the pretty side that you've finished with so the last thing I want to do now is go over pouring this doming layer and giving myself stuff to sand back off all of these pretties you probably can't see a vast amount of what's on any of them from there I know what this camera's like look at these <laughs> so they're rough but when I put the first side of resin on I give them a sand around the edges before I flip them. So all of these are ready to go. If you're thinking that they're a little bit ugly, that's because a lot of them are actually on their back, have their backs showing. Pretty. Okay, I'll stop showing you all of these little pretty things and I will get my resin. I'm using Arts Resin today. So don't have that much left of it. This is the hardener. You mix equal parts of the hardener and the resin. I'm going to be making myself up less than 100 mils today because I don't actually have any pieces to make. I've done loads of resin recently. So I'm just going to do my doming layer on some of these. Normally, because I like my resin to be a little bit thicker and to have gelled slightly, I make a piece first and then after about half an hour or so I come and use it while it's really thick to put on these because it's less likely to spill over. On the ones that have spilled over, do excuse my nails, I've been sanding stuff. I have sanded the the uh, overpaws so that I can come along and put another layer on and they'll be good as new. Unfortunately <laughs> they still get messed up sometimes. I think these ones are beautiful. I don't think you're going to be able to see that well, but they have a kind of stained glass effect on those ones. I get carried away, I just slip into it. Ooh, look at this! Ooh, look at this! Ooh, look at this! <laughs> so I'll, I'm making these. I will be putting a resin doming layer on all of these pieces and turning them, the buttons into a necklace and earring set because they're on studs. From a very dear friend. That's another use for the paint peelings there. These are ordinary buttons and I've used the Fimo gold leaf size to attach the paint and just rub on it. Perfect. Okay, so I'll pause you for a minute. I'll get equal parts, about 50 mils of each resin, mix them together and I'll join you back. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes. I've had time to dome up all of these on this side so that I'm not reaching across the full place. And it's getting to a nicer thickness for me. So it doesn't pour fluidly. So you can twirl the stick and the resin will wrap around it so you get a nice big dollop so that when it does drip, it's a good amount. I'm going to go ahead now and place a drip on all of these pieces here, well, a few drips. I've got a nice amount on there. Yep. 
perfect. Two good globs on that one. This one won't want as much because it's only Diddy. Right, I'm going to get my talking out of the way nice and early because I like to wear my mask. I like to wear my goggles. My immune system is significantly impaired. <laughs> so I really wouldn't like to um, expose myself to resin any more than I need to, regardless of whether it says it's safe or not. As soon as you drip over the side, the resin's going to follow. So if I daub this, which I will, you'll see, one little area goes over the edge, that's enough for the rest to follow and it to uh, begin to pool underneath the item. I'm protecting my mat because it's no use doing your resin on this kind of a surface. I actually have one of my laminating sheets over the top of this board so that I can clear up nice and easily. So I'll put resin onto all of these purple ones up this side and I'll stick you on to higher speed so that you don't have to watch forever because it is quite a slow process and it is fairly basic as well. There's a, a lot of things you need to know obviously about not spilling it over the side, letting it thicken up slightly before you begin, using plastic instead of onto your mat, gluing them down because these ones are not glued down and it is awkward because it sticks to your little thingy like that cocktail stick but I'm risking it for a biscuit <laughs> I'll regret it when I'm sanding them back and doing them again use one of your sticks to hold the piece still like so and then the other stick to just bring it to the edge and work your way around Make sure that the resin touches each edge, like so. It's not quite enough to carry it over. Oh, are you getting my shadow? I deliberately positioned myself here as well because I thought I could avoid it. But I don't need much persuasion. I'm just making sure it's all the way up to my edges. I'm going to continue the exact same process for all of these and then bring you back at the end. Just in case you had a really bad shot up there, I'll give you a little look at some of these. Here we have all the beautiful little poppies and the roses and buttons. These are polymer clay, in case you haven't encountered polymer clay before. I make the jelly roll, jelly roll canes. There we go, they've all got a beautiful domed layer on them. Okie dokie, when your resin's all nicely cured, it's going to need to sit. Well, I think it needs more than three days before you start touching it. Um, I have ruined the load by putting fingerprints and stuff on them. So you just need to choose one of the little pendants, we'll go with this one, it's fairly bonny. Drill through there, now I'm going to put one of my smaller bales on because it is a small piece. You need to make sure your finger isn't over the back of the thing while you're drilling through. I'm just moving out of the way so I'm not filling my pretty box with the resin dust that falls. Let's just wait for it to come through the back. Wiggle it about and get any of these pieces of resin out of the way. Here we are. And I'm ready to find myself a little bale. Now we have nice big bales here. These are fairly huge. But they're beautiful on the bigger pieces. Um, 
This one with the shells has got one of the bigger bales on it. So just depending on what the piece is for the bale size. Okie gokey. Ah, this one is a Christmas present for my daughter. Can you see it's I wish you could see. It's see through ish. But very pretty. She's claimed it. <laughs> But it is going to be a little Christmas present. Right, have I chosen a bale? I'll have a little one. <laughs> so here's my nice little tiny ones. Now I do find that they're deeper here than I need. So I just take my little pliers, pass it open, and then I take my cutters. I just nip a little bit off each of them. I still leave some spike. Do you want ouch goggles and stuff when you're doing that? Because it does fire at you with some force. Right. That's the back. That's the front. The back's normally got the 925 or what have you stamped onto it. I want to wiggle it until it comes down and meets the lovely little hole you've drilled. You need to be careful not to scratch your little bales when you pinch them together like that. And there we have it. We feed it onto one of these lovely chains and we're done. Now for these I chose to put black on the back and hide the reverse of the piece. That's just preference. There's quite a lot of them that I've decided not to do that. There we are. Ta-da! Oh pretty. I don't have a slot for it though so I think I'll have to get selling. Now I will include a link to my eBay or to my Facebook page in the description where you can see where you can actually buy these and uh, you can just message me and let me know your preference. I sell on Etsy as well. I haven't generated a lot of traffic to my Etsy shop because it's fairly new. We have all of these ones. <laughs> And then we have the leather strap style. That was from my fiery peas a long, long time ago. But yeah, that's how you deal with paint skins. Thank you for watching, everybody. Take care, look after yourselves, and I'll see you in my next video.